Here we're going to discuss inverse secant and inverse cosecant. So here I've graphed uh, secant, the secant function. So let's write this down here. f of x is just secant of x. And if you recall the domain of secant, right? Well, x cannot be, x can be anything except an odd multiple of pi over 2. And the range, I can see that the range is, well, negative infinity to negative 1 union 1 to infinity. Now the problem, of course, as far as the land of inverses is concerned, is that secant is not 1 to 1. That is, it doesn't pass the horizontal line test. So as usual, we start off with a function that's not 1 to 1. Let's write this down. So it's not 1 to 1. And that implies there's no inverse. And our solution to this problem is to restrict the domain such that we do get a one-to-one -one function. So here I've graphed restricted secant. So here's a new function we're going to consider. So yeah, people write it as secant, but don't forget it's restricted because the domain is restricted. And so the question is, how are we going to restrict the domain such that the range, the range is unchanged. That is, we still want the, want the range to be negative, negative infinity to negative 1 union 1 to infinity. Now, if you think about the graph up here, right, you, you want to you choose it so you want to restrict the domain such that you get a function that's 1 to 1, but you want to keep this range. Now, let's just think about these two branches. If I just kept the left branch, that would give me the that would give me still, you know, the range would still be I'd still have the 1 to infinity as far as y is concerned. So I'm going to keep either the left or the right. So if I, you know, what people 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 typically do is just keep the right branch. So I'm going to keep the branch that is the the part of the domain from 0 to pi over 2 and eliminate this part, okay? So the domain, I'm I'm going to build up a domain here. So just keeping this branch, that's x can go from 0 to pi over 2. Okay, and the reason I did that is because that gives me the range, the, the numbers in the range from 1 to infinity. And now I want to pick up the numbers from negative infinity to negative 1. And that would be one of these branches, right? Negative infinity to negative 1 or negative infinity to negative 1. Now which branch do we want? Now you might say, why not this branch? It's just sort of closer to the branch we're keeping, right? And some textbooks actually do keep that branch and they keep that interval. But what we're going to do is we're going to keep this other branch. That is, we're going to keep in the domain, we're going to restrict x to be between pi and 3 pi over 2. So our domain's going to be union. Oh, by the way, this, this I put a bracket pi over 2. That should have been a parenthesis, right? Because we don't want to include pi over 2. Let's change that before I forget. So it's 0 comma pi over 2 with a parenthesis because we don't want to include the number pi over 2, of course. Okay, and then union. Now I said we're going to keep this right branch, right, as I've graphed it down here. So that would be from pi, so we want pi, all the way to 3 pi over 2, but excluding 3 pi over 2. Okay, and this would be our domain. Now you might say that's kind of strange, right? But you can see basically what we're doing is we're keeping one of these branches and one of these branches. And I chose to keep this branch to get 1 to infinity and to keep that branch to get negative infinity to negative 1 as far as the range is concerned. Now this function, it's restricted, yeah, but it is 1 to 1, right? And I can see that because it passes the horizontal line test. And that implies there's an inverse. So the inverse of that function we denote as inverse secant or it's called inverse secant, I should say. So inverse secant. And the domain of inverse secant is negative infinity to negative 1 union 1 to infinity. And of course, you get this domain by taking the range of the function that you restricted, right? And then the range, of course, of this function, let's write it below. The range is going to be the domain of the original, right? So it's going to be from 0 to pi over 2 union pi to 3 pi over 2, excluding 3 pi over 2. So this is my new function. We call it inverse secant. 
Okay, so now you might wonder, why would you, wh why did I make that restriction, right? Why did I choose this branch instead of that one? And there's actually an interesting reason for that. We know um, that the following identity is true, that one plus the square of tangent is equal to the square of secant, right? Now it turns out that often you want to um, eliminate or I rather isolate this tangent function. So if you do that, you subtract one from both sides and you get this. Tan squared is secant squared x minus one. And then if I take the square root of both sides, I get tangent x is positive or negative the square root of secant squared x minus one. Okay, now, um, when, when this comes up in calculus two, it turns out, in a, in a technique called trigonometric substitution. So when you use that, you have to, th this is saying something about tangent. Tangent could be positive or negative. And if you provide the right restriction, and if you provide the correct uh, or a uh, useful restriction on x, then you can make tangent of x positive. Now the question is, that you know where is tangent positive? And of course, tangent's positive in the first and the third quadrants. And so with the correct restriction on secant, or I should say inverse secant, you can get tangent to be positive. And that's why I chose the range of inverse secant to be the first quadrant and the third quadrant. Because later on in calculus two, if you provide this restriction, you're gonna be making use of this function in this context. And if you've picked x to be um, to be related to the angle here, what you find is tangent of that angle is positive because it's gonna, the angle's gonna lie in one of these two quadrants. And so that's gonna allow you to write this. Tangent of x is equal to positive square root of secant squared x minus one. That is, you don't need the negative anymore, okay? And that is the main motivation for choosing the range of inverse secant to be an angle between, well, an angle in either the first quadrant or the third quadrant. Okay, now let's do something similar. So this was inverse secant. Let's do something similar now for inverse cosecant. So here I've graphed cosecant, or one cycle of cosecant. And once again, I can see that it's not one to one. So this is cosecant. And the domain of this function, first of all, well, x cannot be, x can be anything except a multiple of pi. So x is not a multiple, or x cannot be a multiple of pi. And the range, just like with secant, the range is negative infinity to negative one, union one to infinity. And the problem, of course, is that it's not one to one, doesn't pass the horizontal line test, and that implies there's no inverse. So what we do is re we restrict the domain. So here is, this is the graph of restricted cosecant, just like before. And that's right, restricted. And the restrictions on the domain, right? You still want the same range. And for reasons similar to what I explained a moment ago, the restriction we're gonna do, uh, choose is, we're, we want this branch, but we want that branch. So it's gonna be, the domain is gonna be from zero to pi over two. And notice you don't want to include zero because the function's undefined there but you do want to include pi over two. Okay, union, how would you describe this? Well, that would be pi to three pi over two, right? Including three pi over two. And once again, this is the first and the third quadrants. And the range, of course, is the benefit of this is that the range is still, well, negative infinity to negative one, union one to, make that a bracket on the one, one to infinity. Okay, now this function is one to one, and that implies there's an inverse. And that inverse function is denoted as follows. F inverse is the inverse of cosecant. Okay, and the domain of that function is the range of the original, so it's negative infinity to negative one, union one to infinity. And what would the range be? Well, the range is gonna be this, right? So it's gonna be zero to pi over two, union, uh, whoop, that's a 
oh, there's a parenthesis on that pi. So union pi to 3 pi over 2. And this is the definition of inverse cosecant. Now, the important thing to remember about both of these functions, if you have trouble remembering the range, just remember that the angle that is the output of these functions lies in either the first or the third quadrant. OK, so now that we understand how we get inverse secant and inverse cosecant, let's go ahead and see how we can make use of them. Let's say we wanted to find inverse cosecant of negative 2. Now, the output of inverse functions, inverse trig functions, are angles, right? So what we often do is say, oh, this is an angle, call it theta. So this equation implies that cosecant of the angle is equal to negative 2. Now, it's difficult to think about cosecant, so people instead think about sine. So sine is the reciprocal of whatever cosecant was equal to. So sine of theta is negative 1 half. Now remember, this, there are infinite angles such that sine of theta is negative 1 half negative one half. You, this is the output of inverse cosecant, and the inverse of cosecant, right, just like the inverse of secant, lies in either the first quadrant or the third quadrant. So can you think of an angle such that sine of the angle is negative one half? Well, that's going to be in this quadrant, right? So that angle is going to be 7 pi over 6. So this is the angle in the third quadrant where sine of theta is negative 1 half. And that means, of course, this theta is what we're looking for. So that means inverse cosecant of negative 2 is positive 7 pi over 6. OK, so now, as I mentioned before, different textbooks use uh, different, um, they choose different, um, they end up with different ranges for inverse secant and inverse cosecant. And we chose our ranges to be in the first and the third quadrants because we're going to find that useful in calculus too. Okay, until next time.